Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to learn how to make this aerial cake topper. So I've got some um, grey modelling paste, you can see I've left it quite marble to give the effect of rock. We're just going to make um, a rough rock shape sloping down at one side that's going to accommodate the tail. And we're just going to mark some uh, lines in there going across. If you look at the rocks from the mermaid they all tend to be um, lines that are this way. And then we're just going to pop that to one side um, just to firm up a little bit. Next I've got some uh, modelling paste that I've covered in aqua and we're just going to make a tail. Now <clears throat> I've sped this bit up quite a bit so that I can slow down uh, the face making aspect of it. So these are quite simple shapes that we're making. Um, so a bit of a flat sausage that's pointy at one side and we're going to slope that on our rock. Just play about with the shape until you're happy. Stick a cocktail through the middle, this is just going to hold it all into place and a little bit of water underneath just to attach it. Now I've got some lighter colour um, of the tail just mixed with a little bit of white. You're going to start off with two balls and you're going to make them pointy either side <clears throat> and then flatten them out um, and this is going to form the fins, the end of the tail um, and we're just going to attach that just with a little bit of water using the rolling pin just to smooth out the sides make it a little bit thinner and we're just going to pop it into place I'm going to draw some lines on, so one line straight down the middle and then the other one's coming around and joining going to do that for both of the tails and then we're just going to um, attach that with a little bit of water, make a little bit of a kink in it using the pointy side of your Dresden tool and that's just going to give it a little bit of movement, make sure the ends are quite pointy and have a fiddle around with them and see which way looks best. So you can see that I'm just going to um, pop both ends together and the end of the Dresden tool underneath just to create that little bit of movement. And we're going to pop that to one side and leave to dry. And then I've got some skin toned Saracena. I've coloured this with just a little bit of chestnut and we're just going to make the body. So we're going to press down at the top end of it and that's going to create um, the sort of shape that leads from the chest up to the neck and you're just going to twizzle around the top bit and that's going to create our neck. Chop off some excess and then she's got quite a little thin waist as Ariel so you're just going to keep spinning it until you see that dip. We don't need to create any kind of boobage for this area because she's got two uh, seashells that are over her boobs and so that will create enough um, of that that we don't have to do it. So just using the pointy side of the Dresden we're going to create a lining to define the shoulders away from the neck. It's going to give you quite a nice shape and you're going to smooth that out with your fingers. Keep playing with the neck so that it's not too wide and then trim off any excess at an angle on the bottom and this just ensures that when you stick it onto the tail um, it joins quite nicely. So a little bit of water just to attach it to the cocktail stick. Don't worry about it being too neat around the join because she has got um, a little bit of extra detail that will cover that over. So once you've finished you should have something that looks like this. Create a little hole for the belly button and then we're just going to create those two seashells that are used to cover her modesty. So just two balls of purple and we're going to roll it into a teardrop shape and then we're going to flatten it and that's going to give us the shape that we want and then just using the pointy side of the Dresden tool you're going to mark in three areas coming across and towards the centre of the point and then this is what we're going to use just to stick on so just a little bit of water and we're just going to place those on. Try to get them roughly the same size 
um, and place them on with the points together. Now we're just going to roll a little bit of purple that's going to hide that join at the front. So just a little small, almost like a rice grain. And we're just going to stick that on with a little bit of water. Okay, so next we're going to move on to the face. So we're going to take some more of our skin tone and we're going to roll sort of like a bit of an egg shape. Always check at this point the size of this against the figure that you've got. Using your little finger, we're going to make a line halfway between the face and this is going to create the eye sockets. Just pushing it up the centre with your nose so you can see the shape that I'm making. And we're just going to try and form that nose shape so you can see I'm pinching and I'm pushing. And that's going to create the nose and it also creates a space for the mouth as well. So putting in the nostrils and then you're going to roll a brush down to the nose whilst you're supporting the bottom. And that's just going to give us a kind of like little bit of a slope for the nose. Now obviously this is not a realistic nose, it's something that's quite quick and simple to do for figures, especially something like Ariel which is an animation. So you're just going to go around the sides of the nostrils, just separating them from the cheeks and then rolling up through the forehead. So next we're going to do the mouth, so you're going to mark in some dimples and then you're going to draw a line with a scalpel to join those both up. You're going to use the scalpel to lift out the top lip and then use your forefinger just to push that lip area up. We're going to use the wider part of the Dresden and just pull down the bottom area and this is going to give us an open mouth. So you can see I'm not taking it too wide and then we're just going to take some white modelling paste and we're just going to fit that in. It wants to be a bit straight across the front of the teeth but in the corners you want to make sure that you push it down so that it's got a kind of bend to it like a natural smile would do. So you're going to mark out the top lip just by pushing it up with your Dresden tool and then marking in just the middle of the lip there that creates the, uh, the cupid's bow at the bottom and then smoothing out, pulling the lip area around. You're going to mark in the bottom lip, so literally just drawing a line with your Dresden tool around. Now you want to make sure that the bottom lip tucks in underneath the top lip. Marking in the teeth and then just pulling up the corners of the smile just to make it look more like she's smiling. So next you're going to carry on just marking around and tucking in the corners of the mouth making the lip a little bit smaller. You just have to fiddle around with it until you find it, that it's looking how you want it to. And then you're going to pull away underneath the chin so you can see that I'm just taking away that excess that is around the chin and this is going to give us a better shape for the jaw. You're going to chop off that excess so you're going to roll it off and then you'll chop it off with um, a scalpel or a knife. But this just helps you give a little bit of a more feminine chin and it just takes it a little bit you, so you can shape it and it's a bit more pointier. Plus from the side she'll have a proper jawline. Pull in the chin up with your brush and then just taking that excess away. So just smooth over where you've taken off and then re-go over any areas, pulling out the nostrils if you need to. You can see that I'm, I have about three tools that I just change hands with quite often. You're just going to mark in the lines to the side um, of the mouth leading from the nose and then we're just going to use the Dresden tool, the wider end of the Dresden tool, just to create your eye socket. So I'm just making the bottom lip come down a little bit, a little bit fatter. And just neatening those lines. So with the eye, you're going to create an eye socket. So basically it needs to be about as wide, about as long as your Dresden shape is. And you're going to 
start with the corners of the eye first and then you're going to round it up and bring it down for the bottom. I'm not cutting any material out here, I'm literally just pushing this back in on itself. It doesn't need to be deep, around about a millimetre deep. So going around the chin, some things will come out of place, so you will need to go put them back in again. So if you just roll a rice grain of fondant, point it at one end so it's already a similar shape to what we need, and then we're just going to pop that in the eye socket, again using the Dresden tool. Now, it doesn't matter how neat the sides are, but you do want to make sure that it's inside the hole. So it wants to be quite small, make sure that it fits in the hole. So I've got some blue fondant, quite small, and we're just going to push that into place. You shouldn't need any water with these. Just using the Dresden tool just to soften out those edges so that they sit as flush to the white as that you, what you can get them. So next we're going to paint around the outsides of the eye. So this is um, the Turquoise by uh, Sugar Flare. We're going to do the outside first and then just with a damp brush you're going to bring what's from the outside in. It just tends to give a really natural uh, eye colour. You want it to be darker at the top than it is at the bottom, so if you need to uh, make it lighter at the bottom, if you just clean your brush and then just wipe some of that colour away. You can always add a little bit more colour to the tops if it's not dark enough. And then once we've done this, we're going to add the eyeliner. So just a small piece of fondant, you're going to roll it into a sausage that's pointy at one side. And you're going to put the pointy side in the corner of the eye. Um, and it shouldn't need any water to stick it on. When you're cutting it off, you should um, cut off at an angle. And that just creates the natural kind of flick shape that we have when we see eyeliner on. And you're going to push that into place with the Dresden tool. And then a small black dot. And this is going to become the centre of the eye. So it looks quite small and you just use your Dresden tool just to push that on and pull it down. Just keep tweaking with it until you're happy with the size. And then I've just got some of the chestnut and we're going to use this just to colour in the bottom of the lid line. You don't need too much and it doesn't want to be too thick, it just needs to be a really thin line just to create kind of like a little bit of a shadow area. If you make a mess, just get with a clean brush and you could just wipe it away. It only wants to be a thin line. So once you've done that part of the eye, we're then going to uh, stick a tiny white dot in. And this is just going to create the reflection of the eye. Now I'm showing you one side of the face and then I'll do the other side of the face. So when you put these dots on, they need to be in the same place on each eye. So if you put it on the right hand side on one eye, it needs to go on the right hand side of the other eye. Next we've got some... Um, more, this I think is Red Velvet by Sugar Flare, and we're just going to create the uh, paint on the lips. So always start with the bottom lip, and you just need to be really careful not to get it on the teeth because the red will stain. Now, I do apologise for some reason, I can't seem to find the clip of me painting on the eyebrows, but I have got several face tutorials where it will show you um, how to paint on the eyebrows, but it's just really starting at the base of the um, eyebrow which is at the corner of the eye and painting a thin line and then just building up on that line. So I've blushed, blushed the cheeks with some rose uh, dust powder, a little bit on the chin and a little bit on the nose. So next we're just going to make the waistband for her which is going to hide the join between the body and the tail. Um, so with this it's just a sausage that's pointy at either side and we're going to flatten that out so it's pointy on the outer side of it. So it comes uh, from being quite chunky to being quite thin. And then you're just going to wrap this around her body with the points meeting in the middle. Just with a little bit of water. And that's going to hide that join that we've got. And then we're going to do the arms. So we're going to roll a sausage that's thinner on one side press down and this is going to create the palm 
once you've got the palm area, if you roll that in between your palm and your finger, that will create the wrist area. Now the arms need to be quite thin. The best advice that I can give is to check it against the figure that you've made to make sure that it doesn't look too chunky or it doesn't look too big. With our scalpel, we're going to take out a triangle for the thumb. Now you could leave it like this if you wanted, but if you wanted to make it a little bit more detailed and you wanted to put in the fingers, you're going to mark in where the hands would crease on the back of the hand and then split it in two and then divide it again. And this is going to create the fingers. Now it's quite fiddly and pulling them apart to round off the edges can be quite fiddly as well. So it's just whether you've got the patience to sit and do that. Make sure that you have with your scalpel tool pull in on the other side as well and that's just going to create a nice neat join uh, for the fingers. Always cut off at an angle and make sure that you really make that uh, sort of section of the wrist quite thin and then you're just going to stick it on with a little bit of water. Now I did one arm that was uh, across and resting on her fin and the other hand was made exactly the same way, but it was done straight and it held onto the rock. We're going to attach our head, so just with another cocktail stick through the middle of the body. And before we do that, we're going to pop on the ears. So just two small blobs. And we're going to use our paintbrush angled down just to make a mark in those. You're going to do that for both uh, ears. Try to get them the same height. And then attaching the head, it wants to be done at a slight angle so that she's looking up slightly. You can see that's what I've got so far. So with the hair, it's uh, quite chunky. Um, and I've just rolled out some red fondant that's pointy at one side and then I've flattened it down. Um, and we're going to create some waves within um, the hair that we've got. So you can see I'm kinking out the bottom a little bit and just putting a slight wave in. Now, we're going to make quite a lot of these. Um, so I've just showed you how to make the shape that we're going for. And then I'll just make them as and when I need. So we're just going to stick these on, making sure that if it's attached to the shoulders or it's touching any part of the body, that that part is wet. Because the more support that you've got structurally, the less likely it is to lean and it's all going to hold itself together. So she's got a parting at one side, so when you're placing the hair on, just remember that she's got a fringe that swoops over one side. So you need to figure out what side that is you want to do. And then direction the hair off that way. Flicking it out, I'm just pushing it out a little bit at the um, bottom to make it look a bit like it's blowing in the wind. So again, a similar shape for the fringe pointy at one side and put in a bit of a kink in and I'm just going to stick that on and just pulling up um, the front area just so that it looks like it's lifted up a little bit. So here she is finished. I did leave her propped up against something just to dry. Here's the cake that I used her for. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did please give a big thumbs up down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. Thanks for watching.